And welcome back to our 2014 gubernatorial debate. In that 60 seconds, everyone stretch their legs, grab a drink of water, let's keep going. Just so we know the format here, again, our, our purpose is to extend discussion because we feel like that's fertile ground for them to explore their differences. We've been killing questions at the end of the debate, though, to accommodate it, but again, we've, we tend to follow your lead. If there's an issue you want to talk about, and you clearly have, we stay there. Let's move to our third question. We've been talking policy, we've been talking a lot of different issues so far. I want to talk about leadership for a moment. I believe one, one of you mentioned that a moment ago. John Quincy Adams once said this of leadership, if your actions inspire others to dream more, learn more, do more, and become more, you are a leader. Here's our question. How do you define leadership? And what is it about you that you believe makes you the best leader for Maine going forward? Based on our format, we rotate who starts. We begin with you. Congressman Michoud, I believe you begin this question. Thank you very much. Uh, leadership takes a unique quality. It takes the quality of being able to sit down and listen to people and really focus on getting, getting results. Over my tenure in public service, I might not have always agreed with individuals or organizations, but one of the things I have been able to do is actually to bring people together to move forward in a positive way. A good example is when I was in the legislature, we passed the May, uh, Forest Practices Act. The industry wanted me to sponsor their bill, I told them I would. The environmental groups wanted me to sponsor their bill, I told them I would. Then what I did brought both groups in. I said, we're going to pass the Forest Practices Act. And I want both sides to sit down, really work out the differences. And we were able to. It took a long time, but it took us two days to find what a clear cut was. But the fact of the matter was, we was able to get that bill passed. That was over three decades ago, and there's been very little changes in the Forest Practices Act. We need a leader who actually can bring people together, even though they might not think you're going to get results. That's the type of leader that I will be, to bring people together, listen to every folks, uh, the folks and their concerns. Thank you. Governor LePage, same question to you, sir. Yeah. Uh, Congressman, that was 30 years ago. What have you done since then? <laughs> Leadership is like a string. Leadership is like a string. You can pull on it, and it'll follow you wherever you want to go. If you push it, you have a disaster. Dwight D. Eisenhower. And Dwight D. Eisenhower, if you study him, was one of the greatest leaders our country's ever had. He got us through one of the most vicious wars in mankind. And I think people like that you look up to and you listen to. One thing about history that I've learned, if you don't learn from it, you're bound to repeat it. So it's oftentimes very important that we look at history. You know, in the last four, the, la the last two years, Congressman Michaud says he works across the aisle. Four bills have been up. One bill, you got two sponsors, yourself and someone else. One bill, you got five sponsors, four Democrats and yourself. Another bill, three sponsors, two Democrats and yourself, co-sponsor, of the late, the last bill was yourself. I passed budgets, I passed bipartisan tax cuts, and I think leadership is about getting what's right for the main people. And no rebuttals yet. We have to hear from Ellie Cutler first. Speaking of main Excuse people, me. I think we ought to define leadership by what the people of Maine need and want right now. They need a chance. They need a fair shot. They needed opportunities to, to succeed, what Teddy Roosevelt called a substantial equality of opportunity. Maine people need that. Maine people need to have their confidence restored in themselves and in our great state. Maine people need a leader who will do that. Maine people need a leader who is strategic, who looks around the state and sees where our assets are and will lead the way to leveraging those assets into success. Maine people need a leader who can communicate. Maine people need a leader who can go out and bring business to Maine and tourists to Maine. Maine people need a leader who they will be proud of, and I will be that leader. Thank you very much. Let's um, move to discussion about the Constitution you indicated you'd like to, to rebut. Yeah, uh, Governor, the only thing that's more partisan than your administration is actually the U.S. House of Representatives. <laughs> and in spite of that partisan nature of the U.S. House of Representatives, uh, this is what leadership's all about. Is we passed the major piece of legislation, groundbreaking legislation in this Congress, was the VA uh, uh, bill. 
that Republicans and Democrats put together. Even though it wasn't an easy task, we put aside the partisan nature, and we did that working together. Another part of leadership is really to focus on what's out there and how we can move the economy forward in a very positive direction. One of the areas I focused on, actually, when you look at New Balance, the fact that current law requires uh, our soldiers to be clothed from head to toe with American-made clothing. I didn't need to pass legislation on that. I set out to really work with the administration to put forward a, uh, the arguments of why uh, New Balance, the Department of Defense, should put out that contract. And they're moving forward in that direction and put out that contract. It's my hope that New Balance will get that contract. And if they do, then that's approximately about 200 jobs here in the state of Maine. So I find ways to work around the system to get the thing done. Governor, I don't need credit. I don't need to make headlines to move Maine forward in a positive direction. The Governor, the pace to you, please. <clears throat> you, you know, you talk about working across the lines. There's a bill, H.R. 679. Honor America's Guard and Reserve Retiree Act of 2013. The sponsors, 32 Republicans, 30 Democrats. The initial sponsor was Tim Walz, Democrat from Minnesota. Neither you nor Congresswoman Pingree was a sponsor on that bill. That bill, I think all Americans, every American should have been on that bill. That's for our vets, for the people we sent to war, and you were absent. You know, you talk about all the things you did, but Congress had, I don't know how many reports from the VA, from the Inspector General, over a number of 12 years, and I think it was 18 reports, and you said something during an election year. For 10 years, you never said a word. We never heard you. You were completely silent. I think that's not leadership. I'm going to allow Mr. Mishu to respond in a moment. However, I want to extend it to Elliot Cutler because, again, I don't want a ping pong match on this side of the, of yeah, the stage. Right. I want to bring you into the discussion. Too. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, oh, well, I'm sorry. Actually, what, Mr. Cutler has a chance yeah. to answer first. I was just listening to Mike and Paul arguing. And I was thinking about the people at home and wondering whether this argument means anything to them, really. Maine people, I think, are tired of 11 years of partisan warfare. They're tired of stuff not getting done. They're tired of people who believe that their parties are more important than the state of Maine. Maine people want something new. They want something else. They look around this state and they say to themselves, how can this be? How can we be 50th in this and 49th in that? How can we have had 11 years of steady year after year after year decline through eight years of a Democrat and now almost four years of a Republican? How can this be? They are looking, I think, for a new kind of leadership that's not going to argue about who did what in the Congress of the United States. We're, we're going to go to Mike Mischel first, and then, hold on, audience, please. Mike Mischel first, then Paul LaPace, please. Congressman Mischel. Thank you. Uh, th thank you. Uh, what the governor is talking about uh, actually is the, the scandal that started uh, in Phoenix, Arizona. It's because Republicans and Democrats on the Veterans Affairs Committee, we had aggressive oversight hearings that actually brought this uh, to fruition. And the fact that we're able to bring it through in part because of a whistleblower what we did was put aside partisan politics. We focused on the issue. It could have been very easy for Republicans to blame uh, Democrats under this administration or Democrats to blame the previous administration for not ramping up, take care of the job. We didn't do that because our focus was taking care of the veterans who needed that health care system. And we did exactly that. It took a lot of work, but with our aggressive oversight hearings, we brought it to fruition. We acted upon it in, in a bipartisan manner, unlike the governor, who actually, when he was noti notified of the Riverview scandal and that the, the state's losing uh, $20 million because the governor uh, has not stepped up to the plate to really focus on that. Governor, taking care of our veterans is more than having ice cream socials at the Blaine House. And I haven't seen any legislation that you have done to really f move forward to take care of our veterans uh, at the state level. And I'll go to Governor LePage first. Yeah. And LA Cover. Congressman, the ice cream social is run by my wife, and I... I 
I'm quite upset that you've taken her down because you don't like my politics. Shame on you. Now. Audience, audience, please. Now. The people at home. I will say this. We are the most patriotic state in America. And I'm sure that each and every one of you are proud of our military. And you want our military to be taken care of. And I will say one thing. I'll go back not only 11 years, I'll go back 20 years. Because 20 years ago, we had a billion dollars in the bank on the inauguration of a governor. And eight years later, we had a billion dollar debt. That's what happens when an independent is forced to buy his way through the Democrats and the Republicans. We've done it twice. We don't need it the third time. Ellie Keller, I'll extend to you, sir. You know, I'm the guy who has told the people of the state of Maine how we're going to cut their property taxes by 20 to 40 percent and how we're going to pay for it. I'm the guy who's running for governor and being honest and forthright with Maine people because I think that's the kind of leadership they need and deserve. I I'm going to extend. Uh, yeah. Congressman Mishu says he'd like to respond. Yep. Uh, just in response to the governor about to Mrs. LePage, I've said it over and over again, Governor, that you have a sweetheart for a wife. She do does a fantastic job representing you at veterans' events, and I know she cares about the veterans. My criticism, criticism goes to you, Governor, the fact that you have not put forward issues that really help out veterans. Homelessness in the state of Maine has went up 26 percent. Part of that's because of our veterans. You have not done anything to move forward helping our veterans other than to veto the Affordable Care Act, which denies over 3,000 veterans access to health care. Get the page. Good chance to respond. Mike, I brought you, I blew up the letter so that you could understand it. I even highlighted it. We do not qualify for the 100% reimbursement. It is clear from CMS. You know, I really wish you'd be honest to the main people. And I will admit one thing. Elliot has run an honest campaign. All right, we're going to do this. I'm about to move on to question four, but I, I obviously need to give you a chance to respond to that, and I'll give Elliot Cutler the last word. Uh, no, I mean, the governor has no plan. And the fact that he continues to criticize, uh, you know, the two of us uh, candidates as far as our proposal, he evidently hasn't read my main main plan because actually that main main plan talks about specifics on how we're going to move this state forward in a very positive direction. And Governor, when you talk about health care, we're not talking about handouts. We're talking about health care for individual Mainers, whether it's 70,000 or 20,000. Those are Mainers, our Mainers, who were denied access because of your veto, not once, but five times. We'll go to you, sir. I need to get that is totally oh, wrong, right. and Mike, you know it. You have to be more honest, please. Mr. Cutler, your chance to respond. Nine years. Nine years on the Veterans Committee, chair of the Subcommittee on Health, ranking member, and we didn't see the hospital problems coming down the pike. Part of leadership, part of leadership, is seeing what's coming. It's making sure that with an Ebola problem, we don't have empty jobs in the epidemiologist's office at CDC. It's making sure that we see what's coming down the pipe in VA hospitals. Part of leadership is foresight. Part of leadership is knowing what the next problem's going to be before it happens. And you just reminded us the original question was about leadership, so we appreciate that. I do want to give closing thoughts, though, on this topic to either one of you. Anything you'd like to add? Governor, anything you'd like to add? Well, you know, I, I really wish that we could all sit down and agree that Maine has a problem with a certain population in the state of Maine. And we ought to do something, and I've been open to doing something. And there are two or three things that we can do. But the majority of the people that people throw out at you qualify for the exchanges at highly reduced rates, like anywhere from $2.75 a month to $30 a month, and you can get commercial insurance, which would reimburse the hospitals at a much higher rate than Medicaid. 
I have never seen, I've never seen a way where you add people to a, to a bad pro, uh, program and gain, gain profits by volume. You just can't increase the volume and expect, expect a system that's not paying costs to survive. I mean, I need to cut you off there. It, it, let's move <laughs> yeah. on to that. Yeah. 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 Very quickly, sir. If you would. Yes. Uh, the bottom line, because the governor vetoed the Affordable Care Act, <laughs> hospitals are losing anywhere from $75 million to $100 million a year. He talks about paying them back. Well, he paid them back with a credit card. Now he's uh, <laughs> denying uh, $75 to $100 million a year because he, his ideology will not allow him to sign uh, when you say the Affordable Care Act. vetoed the, American, the Affordable Care Act, you mean the Medicaid portion that Th that's was in the right, state of Maine. That's right. Governor, do you want to respond real quickly to that, please? Yeah, I vetoed it, and there are better ways to do it that makes the uh, hospitals much, much healthier. And we understand we've been talking to CMS. Congressman, I, like I said, let's go to Washington. We'll sit down. And if I'm wrong in the letter that we receive, I'll resign. And if you're wrong, you will resign and retire to your six acres in Mid Medway. <laughs> what if you're uh, both wrong? Did you want to have, to have a closing statement I, I just, on this topic? I, I just want to know what if they're both wrong? They're not. Thank you, audience. Keep it, 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 it brief, please. Then it gives you an opening. It does, doesn't it? <laughs> well, uh, I'll buy it. your plane tickets. <laughs> You're in. I'm in. <laughs> go uh, Wednesday. Let's uh, go Wednesday. Okay. Well, well, Governor, I hate to form you, but the Constitution of the state of Maine, if you resign, then President Justin Alphon will become the governor of the next state of Maine. <laughs> All right. Let's move on to question four now.